Hello and welcome to the Learning Square. Now continuing our discussion on image compression using MATLAB, in this video tutorial, I will tell you about the algorithm used for JPEG. So having discussed the DCT transformation and the Huffman coding, now we understand the JPEG. So why is image compression actually needed? Now suppose I have an image of 1280 by 1024 size. Then what is the kind of memory which is being used? So I know that essentially for a colored image I have three planes that is R, G, B plane. For such a colored image I would need these many memory locations. So as the size of the image increases the huge file sizes create a problem for data storage and transmission over the networks. Now to overcome these problems data compression is used to reduce the file size. Now we have two kinds of algorithms. We have a lossless and a lossy compression. Now the lossless uh, compression is basically based on the fact that the data may be inefficiently coded. So we use codes like Huffman codes etc to get good compression ratios. Now the graphic image data with lots of fine details when compressed actually with a lossless method entails a lot of processing and a very little compression effect is actually got. So new ideas were needed to overcome this problem which led to the detailed examination of the information stored in an image. Now images have basically shades of light and dark of different hues. So the viewer is basically the human eye and the brain. So the new ideas were centered around exploiting the strength and weakness of the human system. So in 1987 a JPEG group was formed which produced a single standard for image compression. So JPEG unlike the other compression methods is not a single algorithm but may be thought of as a toolkit of image compression methods to suit the user's need. It uses a lossy compression method that throws useless data away during encoding. That is why it is a lossy scheme and it manages to obtain superior compression ratios over most of the lossless compressions. JPEG is designed to discard information the human eye cannot easily see. The eye barely notices slight changes in colors but will pick out slight changes in brightness or contrast. So we basically focus around this to develop the algorithm. So the steps are that we first take the RGB image and convert it to the Y that is the in intensity, chromaticity across the blue and chromaticity across the red format. So this is the luminance in chroma format that we have. Now this is a simple mathematical formula which can be used to derive the Y, C, B and C, R components from the RGB image. Now once this is done then what we do is we do the chroma sampling. So the luminance channel is retained at full resolution. Why? Because we are able to see the differences in the brightness or contrast. But both the chrominance channels are typically down sampled by 2 is to 1 horizontally and either 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1 vertically. So we just retain the half samples of the CB and CR. Once this is done, the luminance and chrominance components of the image are divided up into arrays of 8 by 8 pixel blocks. Now this has been derived out of experiment. If we experiment using 4 by 4 pixel blocks, 16 by 16 pixel blocks, then we see that the maximum compression that we get is from 8 by 8 pixel blocks. And padding is provided if required to ensure blocks on the right and bottom of the image are full. So just in case my image is not able to satisfy the 8 cross 8, then I just do the padding to be able to divide the image totally into 8 by 8. These 8 cross 8 pixel blocks are fed into a process that performs a forward DCT, the operation that we had seen earlier. And the output of this process is basically a set of 64 values. So when I'm processing 64 pixels, I get an output of 64 values, which are the DCT of these pixels. After this, the JPEG quantization is done. So the next step is the JPEG quantization. Now, this is the main source of the lossy compression. The values of the quantization table are chosen to preserve the low frequency information and discard the high frequency details because we humans are more critical to the loss of information in this area. So what is done is in quantization is that I have, now suppose this is my 8 cross 8 DCT terms that I get. This is my quantization matrix. So what I do is I divide each and every term with the individual element in the quantization matrix. So each DCT term is divided by the corresponding position in the quantization table and then rounded to the nearest integer. So 313 divided by 16 is this much and so on. In each table the low frequency terms are in the top left hand corner. So I have this table, my low frequency components are here and my high frequency components are in the bottom left corner. So this is the point at which we can control the quality and amount of compression in the JPEG. Now camera manufacturers 
independently choose an arbitrary image quality and it is assigned 64 value quantization matrix for each and every channel that we have. So for the Y, C, B and C, R we would have different matrices defined by the different camera manufacturers. Now if you notice then what happens is that my first component that I get here after the DCT is my DC value of all the 64 image pixels averaged together. So if I add all these up and divide then I would get this this is the value that I would get 313 after the DCT of my 8 cross 8. Now rest of this would be 63 pixels would be the different AC levels. So these values would be the AC components. If through the user compression level we decide that we want to discard all the 63 AC outputs and we just want to show this value then the maximum compression would be attained something typically to the ratio of 120 is to 1 but then I would have just a resultant image which would show 8 cross 8 pixel area of the same tone. So the compression is very good for images which have less of information present it's like you know a background kind of an image where the intensity values are similar then my compression would be the maximum there. Now after doing this then uh, I just take this AC uh, DC component and then the 63 D DCT AC terms are collected using the zigzag method. So we first start with this then take this then this value and so on. So this is the way we collect the data and after this data is collected then I do the Huffman encoding of these which we had already discussed. So let us see how we practically do it using matrix.